Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Gitanjali. I'm CEO and co-founder of Energy Guru. Um, we have been in solar business for last more than 10 years. This is 11th year running. We have been assisting many international um, solar developers with uh, consulting, international advisory, as well as financing. And uh, while we're doing that, we actually embarked on few uh, innovative ideas and uh, have been manufacturing those. Uh, one of them is an industrial solar boiler that we intended to actually uh, integrate that into thermal power plants. Um, so, and then another thing that we have worked on is a solar drying for agriculture sector. And this is one of the third idea that we have been working on is the um, waterless robotic solar module cleaning system. I would like to talk about, you know, what is the need for waterless cleaning systems uh, and um, again, what are the effects of water on solar modules, what, uh, talk about our technology and uh, maybe, you know, uh, take some of your questions. So um, if you look at, you know, globally, uh, I think the soiling losses uh, vary from anywhere from 0.5 to 1% per day, depending on which part of, uh, you know, the world you are, as well as which part of city you are. And currently, um, there is almost 7,000 to 20,000 liters, and even in some cases, even it's higher, uh, liters of water is wa uh, used uh, per megawatt per wash, which is quite high. And I think um, one of the reasons that uh, we have worked on this uh, robotic module cleaning system is not because of, you know, we were driven by the, you know, for making the solar power developers more money, but I was personally involved in assisting many uh, widows of the farmers who committed suicide last three years in Marathwada. And we know that majority of these solar power plants that we're installing are in the arid regions. And it's criminal to use water uh, when there is hardly any water for farming and farmers are co committing suicide. And that was the key driver for us. And of course, like while we're doing that, of course the developers are going to be benefited. And I think, uh, you might have already seen this. Majority of you have already uh, been using water for washing. 15 gigawatt is already installed, and I am assuming majority of it is all water-based uh, washing. Uh, may I uh, ask you to raise your hands? Whoever has explored, you know, um, robotic solar module cleaning systems at their plants or waterless cleaning um, methods? Hardly any, right? So. So this shows that, you know, pretty much we have gone after installing solar power plants without thinking whether there is water in India or not. So for to wash solar modules, there are definitely guidelines in terms of what pressure the water needs to be, uh, you know, water pressure needs to be applied, what is the pH value, what is the, you know, uh, salt concentration. And there's a lot of rules around that, but hardly anybody, I don't know how many of us are actually using that one. Okay, so that means that, again, we are definitely, uh, uh, again, creating um, adverse effect on the modules because of the kind of water uh, standard that we're using. Now, I think uh, coming back to waterless ro robotic solar module uh, cleaning system, so I think um, you might have seen some pictures already, but so there are, there are a variety of uh, systems are available in the market. And I think one of the pictures that was shown recently by Ujas was uh, one on the truck. So those are also robotic, but then again, uh, the, those, are, those can be truck driven as well. Then um, there are robots that can actually go on the module frame itself. Okay, so they don't need uh, separate rails. And there are certain systems that are that actually uh, need a, a specialized rails to be put in to be able to uh, install their systems. And then there are drone-based systems as well. I'm not going to show the pictures because I I, I knew that we have uh, many of us need to speak, so I don't have to, uh, too many pictures that I'm going to share. But I will only uh, talk about what we have got to offer here. Um, so I think why do we need robotic cleaning is not, uh, human intervention. You know, so that is going to cause uh, some deaths because we are talking about you know, uh, water and DC current. So electrocution risk is there. Then of course we are talking about very harsh currents where uh, it is difficult for human beings to work. So we need to be cognizant about that. And also, if we were to ta talk about water trucks, it's like, it's not like America, you know, we don't have those many, um, that much infrastructure available for washing. 
Hence, we put in few design thinking when we actually came up with this product. So we thought that this product must go on existing installation. 15 gigawatt is already installed, 300 around the world. So it needed to go on the existing installations because there are products in the market that actually only target the new installations because they need the rails. But we actually can go on the existing installations. Then we needed to save water, so this needed to be waterless. It needed to be lightweight. I wanted to ensure that even I can lift on one side and another person on the other side. So it's very lightweight because it's a rugged system that needs to be very lightweight as well because we don't want to hurt the modules. Then brush should not be abrasive. Somebody talked about ARC coating. The ARC, ARC coating cannot be, uh, you know, we cannot put abrasive brushes on the solar modules so that you know, the ARC coating is protected. Uh, many of us are not actually taking care of that and that needs to be taken care of. Um, and also this needed, to, because we are a very cost conscious country and if we are to sell these uh, systems, it has to be very modular and it has to be very, um, people can choose how many they want to buy rather than making, um, you know, um, one robot per module. So it, it needed to be uh, easily moved from one place to another one. So uh, I think the first and foremost thing is, you know, how do we take care of the module surface? Because everybody wants to ensure that we are not hurting the modules. So we actually started with emu feathers. Emu feathers are the softest one. Those are usually used in Mercedes-Benz or BMW. Uh, before they paint it, they actually clean it with emu feathers and then uh, eventually, um, uh, eventually they get painted. Uh, so we actually started with that and then of course we have worked with many materials and finally we have embarked on few uh, materials that would work for modules and of course uh, the heavy duty cleaning that we need to do. So um, I think we already talked about this. Uh, this is one of the, so there are two ways to throw the dust. One is we throw the dust down along the gravity and another way is to do, uh, throw the dust sideways in the gaps of the solar modules. So we have got uh, almost three systems actually. So this is our horizontal brush system which actually uh, pushes the dust down. It laterally moves, pushes the dust down, it laterally moves and that's how the cleaning is done. And these are some um, specifications of the system. This is a vertical brush system. This actually just, it's quite speedy and it just pushes the dust on the sideways uh, in the gaps. And also if you have, uh, you know, blockages in terms of uh, dust, sorry, the, if you cannot push the dust down, then you can cho always choose it to go in the sideways and push it in the gaps. Okay, so this is another uh, vertical brush system. This is fixed. Also, we have got another system that is a uh, slant brush system which will actually move laterally and push the dust down and sideways at the same time. So it's doing the, it's taking care of the gravity as well as uh, it's taking care of the uh, speed as well or in cleaning. This is one of the pictures. Now, the developers do not want to put the human beings on the ground. Okay, so that was another requirement that one of the big, very big developer that wanted us to develop is to not make two people lift the system from one row to another one. Suppose we have one robot that is very modular, so we still needed people to move from one row to another one. So they said, okay, why don't you come up with a train or something that would take the duster from one row to another one. So we had developed that robotic docking train. So the robot cleans the solar panel, it will go on the robotic train, the train will carry to the next row, then it will again go back to the next row cleaning. So last minute for you please. Yeah, so this is a robotic train um, that can carry actually from row to row. These are the rails that are very portable that can actually can, um, we can actually implement. And how many robots are needed? So this is a typical installation that we have shown. Um, two per megawatt is what we recommend uh, for an alternate day cleaning based on the speed of this robot. Um, so this particular system is completely can be controlled by uh, controlled by a uh, cloud. We have Zigbee um, on each robot as well, uh, as well as on the docking train as well. And a 50 megawatt of power, well, sorry, power plant can be actually controlled from uh, 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 from cloud itself. And we have an analytics piece that can actually give you information on the soiling losses. If you give us the generation data, then we can actually compare and give the uh, alerts to you. These are some of the dashboards that are out there. Um, there's a, that will be helpful for you to understand what is going on with the generation and the soiling. 
This is our team. We are based in Pune, by the way. Uh, we are complete, this particular product is completely indigenously developed in India, including the controller and everything. Again, uh, coming back to um, what parameters you should be thinking in terms of robotic cleaning. Uh, whether you want to go with water or waterless is the first question, whether this particular area has enough water. Then how frequently you want to clean. So depending on that, you want to actually choose the number of robots because it is a modular system. You can just move from one row to another one. Then labor availability. So I think I talked about this robotic train that can, you, if you don't have labor, that you don't want to deploy some labor on the ground, then you can uh, always choose some other, uh, other solutions as well. Then the cost of the equipment, how much money you want to spend on that. Uh, and of course, there is a perception that the robots are very expensive, but not necessarily. I can definitely talk about that if you have any questions. And infrastructure changes, because existing plants cannot make infrastructure changes to accommodate the robots. So that's one of the reasons our system like ours, which can actually go on the solar modules itself, will be very helpful for you to not to think about infrastructure changes. Thank you so much and look forward to helping you out if, if need be.